back. We are here. We are here. We are here. We are here. Welcome and Hi. welcome back and thank you for joining us again. Mm -hmm. I am Sue. I am Michael. And this is Jude. This is Jude. <laughs> and Who we are... We are a close-knit family. Uh, it is Wednesday, June 12th, 2019. This is Season 2, Episode 6. Uh, we are a knit cast from Armstrong in the North Okanagan region of British Columbia, Canada, following my adventures as a newer knitter and our ongoing yarn and knitting addiction. Yeah! And Jude is with us because... Um, Jude is here. Well, I had a choice. <laughs> Stand up and sort of lean over sideways and try to fit into the frame sit on Jude or pick her up and hold her. She wanted to be in my chair. Yeah. So. I was actually very tempted to just start recording with her there because she would have sat up and I could and it would have been funny. I but would've she been. wouldn't have sat up though. Uh, e even now she well, can't she, quite well, decide what yeah, she before, wants Before she had fully laid down she was Oh she was there. sitting there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah should have. Oh well. Okay, well now she's, now gone she's gone now. Okay. I took her chair and Mm -hmm. Oh, now I got cat hair and fuzzies yeah. on me. But uh, who cares really. about that? Mm -mm. Now it is time for the skies above Armstrong. Um, yeah. it's been hot. It's summer, late, early, late spring, just yeah. about summer. Yeah. Um, it's supposed they said it was going to get up to thirty-two today. I. It's kind of cloudy though, so it might be muggy. Yeah. Maybe we'll have some thunderstorms. We've had some of those. On and off, and some yep. windstorms. Yep. Woohoo! Yep. Yeah. Woohoo! Yay! Okay. Uh, um, no so, longs to talk about. Yeah. So okay. yeah, some. Of, I don't know. Did I tell you about my terrible? So last. It's funny. Last week we had so much to talk about because mm -hmm. we hadn't been. We hadn't yeah. for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after we were finished, I was like, oh my gosh, there was this and that and other stuff to talk about too. Oh! So did I tell you about the hotel from hell? You have not told me about the hotel from hell. I've mm -hmm. heard about it in whispers and, and, and shared glances. <laughs> but uh, no, you have not actually told me about the hotel from hell. Oh my god! So yeah, we went down, so this is now a couple weeks back, and Melissa and I went down to a celebration of life for... A family member down um, in the Lower Mainland, mm -hmm. and um, we've stayed at hotels in that area before. Mm -hmm. You, yeah, you, well, you stayed at both of them because you were little at the time. Yep, I remember one of them at least. Yeah. Okay. So one, one was a hotel that we had stayed at when my sister-in-law got married, and it was, it was, you know, it was a decent hotel. Mm -hmm. It was okay. I guess these are really motels. Um, and, um, <clears throat> the other one we had stayed at over a Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's the one I remember. And it had like a little kitchenette thing, but it was kind of like, it made me really uncomfortable. Okay. That hotel, I didn't like that hotel. There was something that didn't, didn't feel. Okay. I wasn't very comfortable there. Okay. So, and of in, course, I was too long, too young to yeah. form an opinion. <clears throat> so, in booking our our hotel for the one night, um, the immediate sort of offer when I searched for hotels was this one that hadn't quite made me feel very good. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the map. And I said, No, no, no. We want to stay at the one across the street, right? Because that's the one where we had had a nice experience. <clears throat> uh huh was really the wrong choice to make. Oh. I have never been in such a disgusting hotel in my life. Wow. And you know what? I should have... There's all these, like, you should have clued in. But keep in mind, Melissa and I arrived in town. We'd been driving for five hours or so. Yeah. We got up early. We needed... Melissa was really in a... It was an open house style celebration of life, but Melissa really felt like we needed to get there yeah. when it started, and we were already like not there when it started. Yeah. And we needed to change, and Melissa needed to pee really bad. Yep. 
So I was like, it's okay. We'll just run in. We'll get our room. We'll get changed. We'll yeah. go. So walk in. Well, the, the um, front desk, it was held together with packing tape. Oh. Like, no. <laughs> right? Like, warning bells. The front desk was literally held together with packing tape. Oh. And then, um, the, the dude who was checking us in, okay, checks us in, and then he's like, ah, uh, he kind of looks a little bit sideways, and he says, I'll get you to wait here. I'll go check to make sure the room's ready. Okay. Well, usually the front desk knows whether or not yeah. rooms have been cleaned. Yeah. Right? So it was like, oh, okay, good. Then, so then he gives us a key and we drive around and I mean, I, the other like, hello, warning bell. There was not a car to be seen at this place. Like, oh, okay. like there was nobody, no cars parked there. Okay. <laughs> so why? Anyway. So we get around to the back and we walk up to the door and the, and now there were people around back. Now, so the front side was like a main drag. Yeah. And the so the back was the quieter side of the hotel. So we're headed towards our room. There's two guys trying to figure out how to work a vacuum okay. in, in another room. And so we walk up to the door and there's the big, you know, no smoking thing on the door. Yeah. And um, I had noticed when I read the contract, right, that there would be a huge fine if we smoked in the room okay. and, and stuff. Open the door. It stank. I don't mean it was a little bit smelly. Mm -hmm. The room stank. And um, overpoweringly of cigarette smoke. Mm. But it was more than that. <laughs> right? So... A smart person would have like closed the door yeah. and gone back to the desk and said, thank you very much. Like refund everything that you've put through on my card yeah. and we're going to go somewhere else. That's what a smart person would have done. Yeah, but, but Melissa I, needed to pee. Melissa really needed to <clears> pee <throat> and we needed to get where we were going and I was just in, this is what we're doing. So as we stepped in the door, I said to Melissa... Do not put your bag on the bed. Mm -hmm. Just don't do it. And then I went and I flipped off all the covers on the beds. Yeah. Checked them all. I was holding the duvet up to to the to a light source so I could yeah. see through the duvet. Yeah. And it was like, okay, that all seems to be fine. And oh my god, I didn't tell you about getting Melissa into her dress. She's gonna kill me. But anyway, um, I, and, and, you know, sort of beyond that, it was, yeah, okay, pee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just, whatever, don't touch anything. Wash my hands. Check, you know, a towel. Um, get dressed. So, Melissa, <laughs> I love her to bits. Um, Melissa's been on our program before. Mm -hmm. And um, Melissa's always been really quite thin, like probably overly too thin. And she's recently put on just, well, in her own words, she put on 10 pounds and she was very, very happy about that. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to get into this dress. She has a sprained wrist. Oh, no. And she's trying to get into this dress. And this is like a skin tight dress. Oh, no. So I can hear her around the corner kind of, you know, yeah. oh, uh, uh, trying to get this thing on. So she gets, she's, she's in this dress and it is like, you know, it's stuck to her. Yeah. And she says, mom, I need your help. So I go and she says, it's twisted. So on her body, the side seams are twisted. Okay. And she can't do anything about it because you need two hands yeah. to do that. Yeah. And she has a sprained wrist. So there I am. I'm trying to get purchase on this on this yeah, dress. I'm it's... trying to get and dunk. 
<laughs> yeah. around, and like she's being spun around oh, as no. I'm trying to get this thing spun around. Oh, I around. can only imagine how well that went over. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. We were okay. laughing. Okay. <laughs> so hard. And I said to her, honey, this is not a dress, this is shapewear. <laughs> <laughs> It had everything held in. Yeah. And it was, uh, but I'm like, yeah, you don't pick a tight, form fitting dress without trying it on when you have admittedly, you know, just started to fill out a little bit, yeah. which is a very good thing. It, it, yeah. A very good thing in, in her case. Anyway, so that was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we leave the hotel. We come back later. Oh, no. But needless to say, it still stinks. <clears throat> yeah. And Melissa says, Mom, she says, the clock, it's pushed down behind the table. So, the, like, the bedside. Oh, and before we left, I noticed that there was, like, marks on the bedside table and sort of around the sink and stuff. Like, it might have just been sort of sweat from a cup that had been left behind okay. or or, like, something sticky from a cup or okay. it could well have been an oily substance i don't know because okay. i didn't touch it yep. so we actually brought cleaning products back to the hotel to wipe down the surfaces <laughs> and stuff it's just ridiculous when i think about it yeah so she's like mom the clock is down behind the the bedside table and okay. i'm like you know what I'm not reaching down there to get it. I'm not going to do it. And then the more I looked around the room, there were like little bits of garbage, like a pen cap or just like, you know, like a dust bunny or other sort of flotsam and jetsam, mm -hmm. um, where it, like it just had not been properly cleaned. Yeah. Obviously, this room was... Like, whoever was cleaning it was just like, D -d 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 with the, if they vacuumed it at all, because apparently yeah. they didn't know how to operate the vacuum. Yeah. It was just, and, and then I really, like, the, the, these are all things that just didn't, it, they didn't matter to me, and I guess that's why I didn't notice them, but the, the, the um, refrigerator was like pulled out and mm. it had the microwave sitting on top of it. There was one paper cup beside, the coffee maker. Mm -hmm. um, it, anyway, Melissa and I are both like, I'm not showering here. And it's yeah. like, yeah, no, no, we're not. <laughs> it was just, it was the most, I woke up in the morning and my head would, I was so stuffy I couldn't breathe. And oh, it would no. be from the absolute stench in that room. And I'm like, there's going to be a $200 fine if we smoke in here. Yeah. How the hell would they ever know? Like, yeah. I mean, it was... It was a high dude. Oh, anyway. Hotel from hell. Then they sent me a survey. Will we see you again? No. no. Oh, it was awful. So. Sorry to hear that. Anyway. Ew. And, ew. and hopefully next time I'll have my, my game face on and I'll be able to say, okay, we don't have to stay here. Yeah. <laughs> There are other places we can stay. Oh, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. Was um anyway. was Shirley unavailable or? Well, no. So the the celebration of life was held at Grandma's. Oh, okay. And um, Laura, whose father the celebration of yes. life was for, was staying. Yeah. Okay. With Grandma. Okay. So. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm not sure if you heard, um, but for Robin and I's trip down to Vancouver, we were planning on staying with Grandma, mm -hmm. but apparently Laura and her boy are going to be there for well, that weekend. Yeah, because they're still taking all of mm -hmm. Uncle Bob anyway. Yeah, and Jude's rubbing against the thing. So yes. uh, we'll be staying with uh, with Cam. Good! The school Cam, yeah. That's nice. What? Just, um, okay, the, la the last time Robin and I stayed somewhere we were house sitting for our for our friend and co-worker and she deep cleaned his kitchen one night she was just like you know what i'm bored I'm gonna deep clean this kitchen and she did and so now it's just seems to be our sort of in joke that 
you know, whenever we stay at someone else's house, she will clean their house. Nice! And, and so I, to I told Cool Cam that, and he was like, if she's up for the challenge, yeah. I'll, more power to her. Come clean my house anytime, <laughs> yeah. right? Come on down, clean my house. They'll yeah. love that. Make dinner? Yeah. That would, he would... Just love that. Well, I yeah. like, uh, good. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully you'll get see Mel. And, hopefully, yeah. Well, actually, no, they'll be camping with us when you're down there. Yes. Uh, yeah, Cam said he'll be um, packing, as he said, racing and packing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing he's uh, going to yeah, yeah, be out racing. Is he, oh, is he in Dragon Boat? He's, this? he's been Dragon Boat. That's why he went to Hong Kong a few years ago. Oh, but... I thought it was just sailboating. No, well, maybe he is sailing. I don't know, but okay. I figured it was... Um, I figured it would be dragging boating. I didn't know he went to Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh god. Yeah, that was a couple years ago. Okay. Okay. No, he did that. Anyway, so I'm sorry that had nothing to do with knitting, but uh -uh. oh my god, the hotel from hell. If you've had been in a hotel from hell, comment below. <laughs> oh yeah, it does feel dirty. <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> <laughs> was just I don't even know why we stayed. Right. Oh, but, and then on checking out. Yeah. Because Melissa's like, you're going to complain, aren't you? And I'm like, I, you know what? <laughs> I don't really see the point. No. Because they obviously didn't care. This wasn't like a room where the coffee maker didn't work. And yeah. And I was disappointed. Yes, this right? was. This they don't they care. They don't care. And so as I'm checking out, and, and I was thinking about saying something. Yeah. And I looked, and all behind the front desk that's held together with packing, packing tape, tape, it was just piles of garbage. Oh, no. And I was like, okay. No. They don't care. I just, yeah, we're just, we're out of here. Anyway, ah, on that note, however, a good friend, well, a knitting friend of mine, yes. Janet, is currently on a knitting tour in Shetland. Is and I she? am so jealous. Well, you're going to be there soon. And it just makes me even more eager and anxious. And I, so I'm going to really pick her brain when she gets home. Right. And say, so, what do I need to know? Yeah. And uh, Drive on the left side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think in Shetland we'll probably try and have a car for while we're in Shetland, but not for when we're on the mainland. Okay. Yeah, because, um, yeah. Okay. No. Anyway, and so um, in here, Mike is going to just put up a photo of our knit night last night. Yeah, I um, saw that photo. It seemed like there were a lot of people. We had a, we had some some new people. We had a, a pretty big group, and yeah. um, we had the coffee shop to ourselves. Well, they've started closing earlier. Yeah, and it's really sort of throwing things off. And yeah. there's there's all well there's drama in the knit club knit night over the coffee shop. But I, we'll just <laughs> leave that where it is. I I generally just you know see all the posts and I'm like yeah I can't make it. Yeah. And don't, don't, don't even look in the comments. I'm just like, oh, you're planning knit night? I work. Bye. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and uh, as we mentioned before, Melissa has a sprained wrist. I guess mm. it's it. She's now got like a, at first it was like a couple days, and now mm. she's got a, a thing, and splint. it's going to be a number of weeks. So she's not knitting. So yeah. she's been working on her that baby blanket and really trying to get it done, and mm. now she's not knitting. Yeah. So. Hopefully she doesn't just completely fall off that. Yeah. Okay. And a reminder, uh, registration for Knit City is on June 15th. Mm -hmm. So for not, not to attend the no. registration for classes. Yes. So if you were hoping to get in on any classes, um, go to the website, check out, figure out what classes you want to get and be poised to get read, mm -hmm. get into them on the 15th of June. June. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing I just want, yeah, my Ursa sweater. So you go again, if you've been watching, I've made two of them now. Yep. I get so many compliments. Mm -hmm. on, I get compliments from complete strangers on it. So again, oh, wow. if you've been sort of on the fence about, you know, uh, it's a, it's a very good one. I don't know if that would be flattering on me. It's and, a good one. And uh, okay. I haven't seen it on any smaller people but I don't see why it wouldn't be flattering on someone with smaller proportions but certainly for someone with larger proportions 
Um, it's a very, very flattering sweater. And, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, don't be afraid of the crop topness of it. And the design with the, the triangle mm -hmm. in the front, it's very flattering. Mm -hmm. And so if you, I can't recommend that pattern enough. Ursula, Ursa, mm -hmm. U-R-S-A by Jacqueline Seislick. Seislick. If you search, yeah. if you search Ursa <laughs> on, on Ravelry, Ravelry, you'll probably find it. <laughs> you'll find it. You'll find some I'll, other stuff yeah. too. But and as always, I try to put a link to every pattern we talk to, we talk about in the description below. Yeah. So you can also find it there. And then last night I saw another Soldatna at at Knit Night. Soldatna. It's a Caitlin Hunter pattern, Boylan Knitworks. I don't have my um, thing, but it's like right up at the top of my, I need to knit this sweater. I just think it is a gorgeous sweater, mm -hmm. um, but I'm trying, like, it's like, I'm trying to figure out what yarn I'm going to use because there's all sorts of like, I've seen some and it's like, okay. Various yarn combinations don't work in my mind for yeah. various reasons, and yeah. anyway, so, um, but having seen yet another one last night, uh, just beautiful sweater, mm -hmm. beautiful sweater. Now, here's a question. How do you do that? Here's a question. If you spent around $36 a ball... I guess it was a hundred grams, but thirty-six dollars a ball for yarn. How would you feel if it had like three knots in it? And for if someone's wondering what I mean by knots, I mean that it's not a continuous piece of yarn. Oh. There, there are knots joining it together. I guess not very good. You probably don't care. No. I, honestly, <laughs> honestly, I just knit oh. through the knots and I think it adds a little bit of character. Right? I have an itch on my nose. Um, yeah. Um, there's no way there should be, at $36 for a 100 grams ball, there should not, or skein or whatever, there should not be knots in it. Anyway. <clears throat> I'm guessing some yarn you got had some knots in it. Not me, oh. but my friend who was knitting the soldatna. Oh, that's unfortunate. So yeah, that's um, that's 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 about that. You expect to see the soldatna cast on by. Well, soon? you'll be seeing. I'm thinking I might try and get my yarn at Knit City. Okay. But I'm still trying to figure out how to figure out what yarn to use. Mm -hmm. But anyway. All right. Oh, God, this city is not that far away, is it? It's really not. Are you coming? Um. Maybe. No, okay. no, I'll figure that out. All right. So uh, we're 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 not answering our phone right now. Yes, because we want to talk to you guys. If it's important, they'll leave a message. Um. That's what our phone sounds like. That's our landline. <laughs> yes, we still have one. Yeah. Okay. So yarn acquisitions. Yarn acquisitions. Oh Name my gosh. Stuff. <laughs> Look at that basket. But we're finally going to talk about yarn acquisitions. Yeah. Can we just get this basket in shot? To because like that's yarn acquisitions. <laughs> it's not as bad as it looks. No, it's not. So this. I'm sorry about the crinkling. That's okay. So this is just some undyed yarn. I actually had this last time but forgot to mention it. This mm -hmm. is some DK 100% um, merino. I'm pretty sure. It's probably super wash. Um, I picked this up and um, my friend Brianne and I are going to do some dyeing. So she's got half and I've got the other half. Oh. So we have 10 skeins all together and we're just going to play with some dyeing, because that's what we want to do. So um, this is just undyed yarn. I got it from um, Mid Knit Cravings because they were uh, letting go of a base that they're no longer um, working with. Okay. And uh, yeah, there we go. So 
Yarn acquisition, some undyed yarn that we will play with. Sometime you will see, hopefully, the results of that. Yeah. The other yarn that came in yeah. is the yarn that I asked for. I talked to, well, it was Knitting Fever, who are the people who uh, are, what, the distributors or own or whatever, Juniper Moon Farms. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, I want to do some designing with your new yarn that's not out yet. Mm -hmm. So I can't even get it if I wanted to buy it. Yeah. Um, would you... What, what do you think about some yarn support mm -hmm. for me? And they said, yes. So I've got some of it here because some of it's already caked up. Um, but um, so I received five skeins from them. Mm -hmm. Of this. And I, I'm not going to tell you their color na names because they haven't finalized their naming yet. Mm -hmm. that, that's how new it is. But this is Santa Cruz. Organic Merino. Organic Merino. And if you are have been with us for a while, you'll my nightfall sweater, I knit out of the Juniper Moon Farms um, Patagonia, which is also their Organic Merino. Mm -hmm. And so this is the same yarn, only in a worsted weight. So this comes, so the color is 104. It's the best I can do for you right now. And um, it comes in 100 gram skeins mm -hmm. at 175 meters, 191 yards. Mm -hmm. So recommended for a 4.5 to 5.5 millimeter US 7 to 9 needle. 100% mm -hmm. wool. Um, so yeah, so I, they got, I got five skeins of this. They were very limited on what they had left. Of course. Um, in their supplies. And then I got... Two skeins each of this, which is a dark charcoal black color, mm -hmm. and it's dye lot 10, 101. It may, just be, it may just be our camera, but it looks like there's a little bit of green in there, too. Oh, I don't think so. No? Okay. It's my fingernail. Um. <laughs> and um, this light gray. Mm-hmm. And it is dye lot 103. Now, oh, honestly... They are, yeah, they are different. Yeah. But they're very similar. So this one's more of a cream color. Yeah. But they're very, very similar. So two skeins of this. And I just love this one. Two skeins of this one, which is the same color that I made my... Our light is weird today. Yeah. Um, the same color that I made my, um, oh, what is that, my, oh, Fintry, I was going to say, what's the name of that campsite? Fintry. My Fintry shawl <laughs> by Knox Mountain Knits, it's in, it's in the hall. Okay. That's color 109, mm -hmm. and these are available in the Patagonia, which is more of a sport DK weight. These yarns are amazing for color work. They've yep. got that toothy feel to them. And then this nice sort of red color, which is color 116, mm -hmm. which is a really nice red. Now, really, for what I want to do, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle for me to get these to all work together. <laughs> but I have plans and ideas. Yes. And then I'm going to use the... Um, the what do you call it the Patagonia for some of my smaller projects and try to get more of my color in which is which that one goes there um, try and get more of my color in with those mm -hmm. so that's the yarn I received from Knitting Fever slash Juniper Moon Farms for yarn support for doing some designing which I kind of exciting yay yeah. At least it's exciting for me. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. So that happened. Okay. <sighs> Those. Those. Okay, so last week I showed you the baby sweater I was making up as I went along. Yeah. Oh, it's very, oh, it's so tiny. And so I need buttons Ooh. for it. Yeah. But, so there's, oh, there's. Oh, put a little handmade tag on it. There's one, two, three, four buttonholes down the front. Mm -hmm. So it needs, it needs buttons. And, but, 
Yeah, Mike's Mike's getting gooey about the handmade tag there. Mm -hmm. And um, so just a little, um, yeah, just a little outside sweater coat, maybe for the fall. And this can fold back. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it's made for a 3D baby, so it doesn't actually fold very well. But um, <laughs> that yarn was from Manos del Uruguay. Mm -hmm. Serpentina. Mm -hmm. And what was it called? Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. That's right. So totally not a baby suitable yarn, but I don't care because it's super cute. Yes. Which is what it's all about as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Okay. So that was my foe. Yay. Whips. Whips. Can I talk now? You can talk now. <laughs> you know you God, can talk I, sooner. I ask you yeah, for Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't know what to talk about. I'm a bad conversationalist. So, uh, the other day at work, I, I did get some more uh, into my temperature scarf here, but it was only like three days. Ah. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, they're just... Oh, eh, mm, mm, mm. oh drop stitches. Uh, there we go. We're but, professionals. So, yeah, it was, it's only like <laughs> the last, you know three days that you can see on there so like one two three lots of sunshine yeah lots of sunshine it has been cooling off though yeah uh but the lows are also getting higher so <laughs> the lows are getting the high. lows are higher and yeah. the highs are lower yeah. yeah so yeah that's uh that's a temperature scarf um it is uh being knit uh as stockinette stitch using an i-cord edge uh, and it is using the Barocco Vintage, uh, yarns. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. are nice and soft. Mm hmm Sorry, that was... Being held, being held double. And I'm going backwards. Are you? So back to the yarn from, uh, Juniper Moon Farms. Yep. That's the, when I would, it, it's a very nice, like, it's a toothy yarn, so it's good for color work. But it's soft. Mm -hmm. Like even though, like if you just sort of touch it, it's like, oh, it has a rough texture. Like it's not no. like a super wash that's yeah. slippery. It's like it has a rough texture. But when you really, like when you hold it, mm -hmm. and if you put it here, there is no prick mm -hmm. to it at all. It's very, very mm -hmm. nice. Okay, so I have been putting a few rows on Harton. So mm -hmm. by Kim Hargreaves, the mm -hmm. one with all the cables, mm -hmm. the green one, but not enough to get excited about. Mm -hmm. And I have now put Harton into my closet okay. to sit and wait for me because I really need to concentrate on the stuff I'm designing. Okay. I have put a few rows on my blanket. Okay. But it still looks it's like a, it's a blanket. <laughs> it looks like it did last time. Um, of course. Okay. So yeah, the Okay, I wrote sweater. There was something blocking on the table when I came in. Oh, no, that wasn't blocking. That was just drying. That no. was my other Kim Hargreaves that it needed a wash. Right, okay. Okay, so anyway, but I um, did put some more progress on... So I finished my heel turns on my socks. <laughs> okay. What? I'm, I'm just comparing that to my sock progress. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yeah, so I've got my heel turns done. I'm just knitting up the leg and I, I want to weigh. So these are, this is, these are my two, these were each 50 grams when I started. Mm -hmm. So I want to weigh them and see how much is left and decide if I want to make long socks mm -hmm. or if I'm going to make shorties and make two pairs. Mm -hmm. Which is probably what will happen, because <laughs> that's what I do. Um, I initially was kind of like, I don't like, I think the green was a bad choice for my contrast, but I'm kind of, it's growing on me. It seems fine to me. And um, lots of other people like the green, so majority yeah. wins or yeah. something, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the progress I've made on my socks. 
I'm keeping these out for my just sort of okay I've got my blanket is still out that I can work on it because it's something I don't have to think about mm. so if I need my brain to recalibrate mm. I can knit on that and I've kept these out for carrying around with me and or recalibration yep. knitting and I realized as I was going through I pulled out the my pattern my because mom told me so pattern yeah <laughs> And um, it's ridiculously complicated where it doesn't need to be. Oh. <laughs> so um, I'm going to be redoing that. Okay. And making it super, super easy. Okay. Yay! Either that or I put in the wrong terms when I typed it. And oh. where I should have put like wrap and turn, I put like knit front back, which are entirely different things. Very different things. Yeah. yeah. So, what have you got going on? Uh, I put in a couple rows on my socks. Uh, I think I just did this while I was editing the video last week. Um, but yeah, you can see, you know, that's where I was last week. And, you know, just a couple rows. Uh, still, you know, getting back into the I actually have time to knit. And, um, well, yeah, recover coming down and recovering after a show, a big show like that, which was a huge success. Mm -hmm. so, and still can't get over. Same ball of yarn. <laughs> they, <laughs> they just don't look quite the same. No, do they? no, they don't. <laughs> I kind of like it, but they yeah. just don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's uh, funny. Yeah, I've chosen to not do a contrasting color for these, uh, just to see how that turns out. Cool. Yeah. Right yeah, they're great. Yeah. And so, so Mike. Yeah. What do you bring to the table? Oh, you don't have more whips? No, like I didn't bring, I, there was no point in showing them. Oh, and, oh okay. And, and I've kind of put them, you know, I've kind of put them away. And okay. So mostly, yeah, if I show anything whip-wise in the next little while, I don't know if I'll share my projects with you as I go along. Probably not until I'm I'm pretty okay. solidly comfortable with them. Um, but it'll be socks and okay. maybe my blanket. Okay. Uh, I don't know why my nose is so itchy. I'm so <laughs> sorry. But uh, what I bring to the table? Well, I bring to the table another game for my wish list. Um, this one is probably in a fight for the top spot on my wish list um, with uh, Quacks of Quedlinburg, which I have mentioned before. Uh, the difference is this game is obtainable currently in Canada. Um, it's just prohibitively expensive. Um, <laughs> It's, uh, the, the game is one that maybe some of you have heard of. It is a game called Twilight Imperium, the fourth edition specifically. Uh, base, the, the main conceit of Twilight Imperium is, um, that, um, uh, the, the Emperor is dead, and the throne on, on the planet of Mechatol Rex is empty. And hey, don't you look like you could fill that throne really nicely for you and your individual race. Uh, the game, yeah, so the game is about, um, I believe it's between th four and eight players um, are competing for control of Mechatol Rex. The game ends when someone gets 10 victory points. This often takes eight hours. Oh my lord! Yes. Okay, that's dedication. Yeah. Unlike Dungeons and Dragons, it goes on for years. Yeah. Years. Well, but in Dungeons and Dragons, you can take it in small little chunks that are exactly, <laughs> as long, are exactly as long as your party needs. But yeah, Twilight Imperium is a marathon of a game. Wow. It is huge. It, the, um, the, the publishers have been doing something recently where with their games they publish both a learn-to-play manual and a rules reference. The purpose being you read the learn-to-play to learn-to-play, learn and the rules reference is what you refer to during the whole game. For Twilight Imperium, the learn-to-play book, I've read it, is about 20 pages. Oh my goodness. Like, 
Yeah, yeah. it's it's <gasps> stupid big, and I want it. <laughs> okay, keep talking. Okay, uh, yeah, and it has this these really cool. There's 17 uh, individual uh, races to choose from in just the base game. Uh, the the board is a modular hex design, so it's different every time you play. Uh, you each uh, each player has their own individual secret objectives that changes the game. Um, yeah. Hi, honey. I'm home. Hi, mom. Yeah, Twilight Imperium. It's on my wish list. I I need it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I thought of another acquisition. Okay. This arrived the other day. I ordered it ages ago. Mm-hmm. It's The Knitter's Dictionary by Kate Atherley. Okay. And it is quite literally, and, and I knew that getting it, but it is quite literally a dictionary. Oh, yeah. So, it's not like a book you read. No, it's a dictionary. It is a dictionary. So it answers sort of all your questions about what the heck is that knitting term actually mean. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's funny because I was flipping through it just to sort of see. Um, it's published by Interweave. Mm-hmm. Um, it starts out with a like with a how to get started with patterns. Mm -hmm. And then um, and how to read a yarn label. Okay. Um, and how to sort of recommendations for different kinds of yarns for different things. And then it goes straight to the A to Z of knitting. Nice. So I went through to just sort of see were there, were there things that came up that I wouldn't have known. Mm -hmm. And right away I, I saw I saw a definition and I was went, I was like, oh, I so disagree with that. Oh no. I so disagree with that. I can't oh, even remember, no. I don't even remember what it was. But I know that then later on, the same sort of definition came up. Mm hmm. And it was completely contradicted with the thing that I said oh, I no. disagree with that. So. I, I don't uh, yeah I um there just those <laughs> just those couple of things I, so I'm wondering yeah it was kind of strange I I'm not I'm not trying to pick it apart or anything it's the only thing but but really like if you want to know like what is magic loop mm -hmm. um what do, what do dashes in a pattern mean mm -hmm. um what's a darning egg mm -hmm. or darning mushroom uh, what does it mean when it says join for working in the round? Mm -hmm. So just and the jogless jog and the jog and it's even got the definition of Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off in here. Oh, um, all the different what do all the different neck shapes and things oh, yeah. mean? So it's really a very it's I think for anyone um, who has looked at a pattern and gone I don't understand what that term means yeah or I kind of think I do so I'm gonna kind of go with that yeah <laughs> this would be a really good reference for um, just you know this this is what it this is what yeah. that term means yeah um, so yeah and especially again anyone who's thinking about doing any kind of designing I think it's super important for designers to use the right terms for the right things because mm -hmm. uh, that can can be very confusing to someone who picks it up and is expecting one thing and <laughs> something else happens. Sorry, I just looked at the upcoming uh, events from around the world, the very first one. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> so speaking of which, it's time for events from around the world 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 i know we we give it this huge yeah up. don't you feel it the huge bit? yeah okay on saturday june 15th it's the wool monty <laughs> ah! oh, the fly dds arena on broughton lane in sheffield and I'm 99% sure that's in England. <laughs> Could be some other Sheffield somewhere, but 99% mm -hmm. sure that's England. 
the wool Monty. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> on Monday, June 17th, 2019, it's the Youth Knit Camp at the Twisted U, Idaho, Garden City, wait for it, Idaho, Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> which is in the United States. Yes. Um, I thought that sounded cool. A youth, a youth, youth knit, knit camp, camp. right? Like, yeah. It's a great way to get younger people just like, here's... I'm, I mean, obviously, I don't know what their content is or what they're actually teaching, but I think here's that's a cool thing. Yeah. And on Sunday, June 30th, 2019, mm -hmm. it's Twisted, a yarn festival for creatives. Oh. See, that sounds like fun, too. Mm. <clears throat> um, that's at Gallery 1, Mitcham, South Australia. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's some events from around the world. Uh -huh. And it dawned on me while we were sitting here yes. a month or so ago. Yes. Oh. We announced that, hallelujah, for what? everyone sitting here, Mike was moving out. <sighs> well, then that didn't happen. No. So Mike's still still at home with us, and that's we're we're. It's, it's good. Yep. Right? Like, I mean, it works. Mike's not a pain in the ass at home, and I don't think he hates it. No. I quite like living here. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, I mean, it would be good for everyone for that to happen, but it's also not, you know, terrible that it didn't. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, just in case you were wondering why we haven't spoken about Mike's exploits in moving out and stuff. Yeah. Okay, I don't have anything else. I think that's about it for me too. Okay. Okay, so thank you for joining us today and thank you for uh, for joining us if you're new here. <laughs> Please, uh, if you like Thank the... you for joining us and thank you for joining us. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> if you... <laughs> If you like the video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps us out here. Really, on really, YouTube. really. Hit yeah. like, hit yeah. like. Right now, go like. Yeah. And then go down and say hi. Yeah. And subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah. Uh, Tell your friends. Yeah. Spread the news. Mm -hmm. On Instagram, I post a thing on Instagram, you know. So go to Close Knit Family Knit Cast on Instagram mm -hmm. and, and repost our thing yeah about this yeah uh, <laughs> it did. uh join us on ravelry close-knit family knit cast uh follow us on or no join us no follow us on instagram close-knit family knit cast join us on ravelry all the information for that will be on the end card and in the, the description and as always keep your, your knitting close, close and your, your family closer, closer. bye, bye.